Okay, we're con continuing an exercise where we figure out the reaction that happens in an electrolytic cell and find its cell voltage. The fact that these are electrolytic cells means unless they throw us a curveball, we should always get a negative voltage. Negative voltages means the reaction's not spontaneous, and that's why you would make an electrolytic cell, because you need a power supply to force the reaction to occur. So, what reactants have we got here? Aqueous means we have water, which might react. We'll see. Sodium bromide means we have sodium ions and bromide ions. Zinc chloride tells us we have zinc ions and chlorides. And now we need a data book. And rather than try to remember those things, I'm just going to jot them down here. Water, sodium, bromide, zinc, and chlorides. So we read down the left side, up the right side, and let's see what our reactants are. Sodium bromide, zinc chloride. I, my, my bet is zinc, but I have not checked ahead of time, so I could definitely get surprised here. Sodium bromide, zinc chloride. I know water's down here, and we may get to... Where is the water? There. If none of these other things ha happen, then we're going to hit water eventually. But try to keep an open mind and do the check diligently every time. Sodium bromide, zinc chloride. Ah, okay. We hit zinc just before we would have hit water, so zinc is our SOA, but just barely. And now we go up the right side. Water, sodium bromide. Here's sodium, but it's sodium metal, so we can't use that. Sodium bromide, zinc chloride. This is zinc metal, so we can't use that either. Sodium bromide, zinc chloride. Um, bromide ion, maybe? It's going to be bromide or water, I think. Sodium bromide, zinc chloride. Here's bromide, but only with silver. Sodium bromide, zinc chloride with hydroxide. That's not it. Yeah, here we go. Bromide is our strongest reducing agent. If we'd gone just a bit further, we would have hit water in again. But in this case, the bromide prevails. And that is our strongest reducing agent. So it's a zinc bromide cell. And the two reactions are zinc 2, picking up an electron and two electrons, sorry, and reducing to zinc metal. And then we have bromides oxidizing to bromine and losing two electrons. I'm sorry, the zinc should stay two electrons. And we get a rare treat here. A number of electrons just matches, so we don't have to do any multiplying to scale those. They match already. So our reaction is just these two things. And we need voltages, don't we? For zinc, as written, it's minus 0 0.76 volts. Negative 0 0.76 volts. For bromine, as written, it's 1.07 volts. But we're going the other way. We're starting with bromide ions and going to the left. Flipped reaction means flipped voltage, minus 1.07 volts. So if you add those reactions together, you add the voltages together, and that gives us minus 1.83 volts. The negative is expected. That tells us this reaction would not go without a power supply to push it. And that power supply would have to be more than 1.83 volts to make this reaction go. OK. Sodium sulfate is our next one. Aqueous, meaning we have the threat of water here. We have sodium ion, and we have sulfate ions. So what happens, or what wants to happen naturally? We 
our contestants are water, sodium ions, and sulfates. If we read down this side, water, sodium, sulfates. Water, sodium, sulfates. I'm going a little fast because I have a pretty good idea what the answer is going to be here. Here's water. Sodium is down here, so it's not strong enough to compete with water, and there aren't any standalone reactions with sulfate here. It's always sulfate plus other stuff. So, here's the water. There's our strongest oxidizer. Now we go up the right side. Water, sodium, sulfates. Here's sodium, but it's sodium metal, so we can't use that. Sulfite, no good. Water, sodium, sulfates. Here's sulfates with lead, but we don't have lead. Water, sodium, sulfates. Water, sodium, sulfates. Water, ding. Here we are. Okay, so another water reaction. Remember we saw this in an earlier example? This is a reaction where the sodium and the sulfate don't accomplish anything. If you hook up a sodium sulfate solution and try to electrolyze it in water, the reactions you get are the water says, I'll be your strongest oxidizer, and I'll pick up two electrons and turn into hydrogen and hydroxides. I will also be your strongest reducer. which will give you oxygen and four hydrogen and four electrons. And the sodium and sulfate won't get a chance to do anything. This reaction, the H2 to OH, is down here and its voltage is minus 0.83 volts. 0 0.83 volts. The other water reaction is the one up top here. As written, it's 1.23 volts, but we're running it in reverse, so we get minus 1.23 volts. Flip a reaction, flip its voltage. And that gives us, we've even seen this total before. So another reaction where the chemicals that you probably were interested in electrolyzing, you can't, ox you can't electrolyze in water because the water jumps in and takes over. It is your SOA, it is also your SRA, and so once you get to 2.06 volts, this reaction starts and it starts hogging all the electrons. So, you'll see in some of the next examples, there's ways around this aqueous problem, but there's definitely some reactions where you cannot work with water because water takes over the show and prevents other reactions from occurring.